Hello everyone, it's Michael Zard here, and welcome back to the channel. Now before I begin today's video, I would like to remind you guys that I am still giving lessons during the summer. So if you're interested in taking private lessons with me, email me at michael.azardlerbyzantinechant.com. Also, we just hit 400 subscribers, and usually when I hit a subscriber milestone, I like to do a Q&A. So leave any questions you have down below regarding Byzantine chant or singing technique or music theory or anything like that in the comment section down below. Now in today's video, we are going to be discussing Ison part two. Last video on Ison, we talked about how to read Ison, meaning how to decipher the notes of what the Byzantine scale looks like for Ison. And in this video, I'm going to teach you the technique behind singing Ison. Now singing Ison is very important. However, if you sing Ison incorrectly, you could disrupt the chanter who is singing. Now, there are two important things when doing Ison. Stability, meaning you don't want your voice to be like, oh, when you're doing Ison. And you want your pitch to be accurate. So stability and pitch. Now stability comes through a few things. One of them is breathing. Now I have a few videos on breathing, but the most important thing is you want a steady airstream to come out. So for example, when I do Ison, I don't want to do vibrato. I don't want to do oh. I want to do a more flat tone. Oh. That way, the Ison does not confuse the chanter and it's more stable. The next thing that should cause stability is how you open your mouth. Now, I've tried to figure out over the course of the last few weeks, what is the best vowel sound to do Ison on? Now, some people say when you do Ison, you should follow the text of the chanter. However, there's a few issues that come with this. Uh, this works well if you're in a choir. However, if you're not in a choir and it's just one chanter, I don't really like doing this. Now, the reason why I do not recommend you copy the words of the music for each song when there's a solo chanter is because usually the soloist might like to play around with the tempo. They might speed it up a little bit, they might slow it down, they might change the dynamic, so they might sing loud or they might sing quiet on some places. So if you are singing the Ison with the words, that could really mess up the chanter, not allow them to do as much playing with their voice. Now, the vowel sound that I think works the best for Ison is U. I don't mean U or Il or U. I mean just a plain U. Now the reason why I chose U is because it is the least likely vowel sound to create overtones. Now what is an overtone? It's this. You can hear. It's the pitch is above the pitch I'm singing. So. So you can hear the overtones when you're doing ooh, ooh, there's no overtones. Now overtones are not good when doing Ison because the overtones can really conflict with the pitch. For example, in hard chromatic, if I'm doing oh, and an oh comes out, that really can mess up the chanter. Because let's say they're cadencing around the, the and I do it and I'm on pa, that means that the F sharp and the G from the D are going to really mess around with each other and create too much dissonance. So now that we got stability out of the way, let's talk about how to create the sound now. You want to do the OO, so an OO, not an OO, because that's not good, or an O. You want just a solid OO, and you want the airstream to be fast, and you want it to be consistent. Now this requires some diaphragm support. Now, if you're having trouble supporting or using the diaphragm, you might want to push a little bit on it just to really feel it and understand what it feels like. Now, I did a video on breathing before, so this will definitely help to incorporate some of the breathing skills. Now, one thing you should not do in Ison is scoop into notes. I can't tell you how many times I've heard chanters and then the Ison becomes like this. Oh, you do not want to scoop into the note. In fact, you want to do the opposite. You want to attack the note from above. Because guess what? If you scoop into the note, you're going to be flat. And like I said before, the second important thing is pitch. If your pitch is wrong, you're going to mess up the chanter. Oh, look, if I want, let's say I want to go to D from there. Oh, you want to attack from above, not oh. 
because sometimes you might land under the pitch. Oh, I can't tell you how many times I've heard Ison be incorrect because they come from under the note. So we've gone through how to create a stable pitch, how to attack the note, come from above as opposed to underneath. And the final thing we have to talk about is listening to the chanter. This is going to take two things, volume and pitch. The main rule is the Isun should never be louder than the chanter. If there's a solo chanter and 10 Isokrates, they, the 10 of them, should be quieter than the chanter at all times. You should never have an Isun be louder than the chanter. The next thing is you have to be constantly listening to the chanter. I can't tell you how many times I've heard Ison and it's one chanter, but there are five people doing Ison and all of them are singing different pitches because they're listening to each other as opposed to the chanter. The Ison has to listen to the chanter. Now, how can you tell if the pitch you're singing is correct? Well, there's two ways. The first way is through vibrations. Now, whenever you sing a piece of music, there's always going to be some vibration. However, when you're singing with another person and the intervals are wrong, you're going to hear a lot of vibration. So let me go and get something to show you what I mean by vibrations. So here I have a uh, software where I will hold out the note. So let's start with, um, let's just do equal temperament C. So. Now look, if I don't sing the pitch correctly, it will sound like this. Ooh. You can hear the vibrations, but when I sing the pitch correctly, ooh, there's no vibrations. Now, when you're doing Ison, one way you can train is by finding a piano app or a software that will hold out the pitch and really focusing in on making sure there are no vibrations. If there are vibrations, that means your pitch is off. And when your pitch is off, you're going to mess up the chanter. So let's look here. Some good places to practice are the fifths and the fourths. So, so for example, if I'm on pa, mom, and I know it's going to jump between ga or the, I might do this. And try to sing it before and then press the note. If I end up flat, I will hear the vibrations and I'll know I'm wrong. If I hear it sharp, I'll hear the vibrations and know I'm wrong. Now, this is good practice for really centering your pitch and making sure you can improve how your pitch is. Now, there's another tip I have which I really find useful for knowing if you're in tune with the chanter. And this tip, a lot of people don't like it. I think it has its cases when it's hard to hear yourself. So, for example, if the chanter is here and I'm on his left side, I would cover my left ear because this makes it easier to have feedback to my voice. Uh, just covering your ear lobe a little bit makes it so you can better hear yourself and the right ear will then hear the chanter. So, for example, let's assume this is the chanter. And I have to sing this note. If I hear vibrations, I'll know I'm wrong. For example, oh, once you feel vibrations, you know you are wrong and you have to adjust. Now, the last thing I want to discuss is low Isun. Now, you can take Isun higher, for example, pa -di, or you can do pa -di. Now, you can do low Isun, but here's my recommendation. If you know you're not a bass, don't try low Ison. You want to really perfect the high Ison. Now, uh, when you're doing high Ison, you want to make sure you come from above and that you don't have much nasal quality in your voice. You want the strong ooh, make sure your palate is lifted so there's not much ooh. When you have nasally Ison, that can be even worse because nasal tends to create even more overtones. Like we said before, those can really conflict with the music. Now, low Ison, you want to make sure you're not doing this oh, and really doing some vocal fry. That can really damage your voice if you do it too often. Uh, what I recommend you do, you keep your head normal. You do the oo, oh, or if it's easier to do an ah, uh, ah, uh, or an eh. Now, lower notes, you don't really hear the overtones as much. And because it's a lower frequency, you have to really make sure you get the pitch right. Because the frequencies between lower notes really are not that far apart. So you want to make sure you are singing the right pitch on the lower note. 
and you can maybe sing an ah oh, instead to get a louder volume, or maybe you can stick to u or an e, but you do not want to be nasally. E, that's kind of annoying. Oh, is a little bit better. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, I would greatly appreciate if you liked and subscribed. Remember, I'm still giving out private lessons during the summer. So if you're interested, email me at michael.azar at Don't forget to leave a question in the comments down below. And I'll see you on the next one.